Hey everybody, so there's the Warhammer Skulls Festival of Video Games sale going on on Steam right now. Up to 90% off all Warhammer products. It's typically more like 80% off, some are as low as 30% off. They say up to 90%, but very few of them are actually 90% off. So seeing as a lot of these games are older, and I've played not all these games, but actually shockingly a lot of these games... I figured I'd give you guys my opinion on which games I would recommend you buy while they're on sale, which games are fun, which games are worth experiencing, stuff like that. So I'm going to briefly describe each game, then give my opinion on them. You know, kind of going from top to bottom. So right now we got Space Marine 2. Space Marine 2 is shockingly not on sale because it hasn't even launched yet. But what we do have is... Uh, Space Marine 1. Now Space Marine 1 uh, is on sale right now for $12. This game was launched in 2011. Um, I would call this a somewhat out of date FPS game. Uh, it, it tries to use a lot of concepts that to Doom 2016 would later, um, let's say, finalize and actually de uh Killing enemies in melee with special animations to get health back. Uh, you know, things like that. They, they, they tried to revolutionize and, and be advanced with that. It was good for the time, but at this point, if you played Doom 2016, uh, Doom Eternal, it can probably feel a little bit outdated. Uh, that's because they just uh, refined the concepts that this game, you know, kind of try to go with. Other than that, uh, you're fighting, you're, you're playing Captain Titus, and you fight orcs, and then you fight Chaos Marines, okay? Uh, that's not a shocker. You can even see it in the trailer here. Big shocker, demons show up at the end. It's about an eight-hour campaign. It's decent. Um, all Warhammer games will get better reviews for being Warhammer games. That's just something that's always been true. Overall, for $12, this isn't a bad game. But uh, I, I think people who've played a lot of FPS games can probably start feeling, you know, that this isn't really that good. It's not a bad game. It could just feel a bit outdated. Now, there are um, co-op modes where it's you and friends against hordes of enemies. There's PvP modes. But the PvP is peer-to-peer, -peer, meaning that you can often run into some lag issues. Overall, is Space Marine 1 worth it? Eh, maybe. I just, I fear people who haven't played it on release. Because, like, I've played it on release. I fear a lot of people who didn't do that will, will play this game and go, Ooh, this is feeling kind of outdated. Mechanicus. Okay, so this is Mechanicus 2. Once again, don't know why they're showing Mechanicus 2. Uh... That's obviously not on sale. Um, it has not uh, launched. Mechanicus. I am very good. Okay, so Mechanicus is currently on sale for $6, which is pretty good. Uh, this game is very highly rated. Continues to have pretty good ratings. Uh, it's got a very good soundtrack. Uh, it's very much an indie game. It's kind of a low tier game. Uh, this game is turn based. You are playing the uh, Adeptus Mechanicus against Necrons. And the general idea is you level up your characters, you move through the area. Um, that, that's generally it. There's pretty good reviews on YouTube if you want to watch those. So uh, I would probably recommend doing that, but at, at $6, it's a pretty good deal. Um, I would say this game is pretty highly rated that if you got nothing better to do... Uh, and you do enjoy turn-based combat games, this one is probably a pretty good option for you. Um, I don't really see anything wrong with that one. There's also the Warhammer Freddy Mechanicus Omnissiah Edition. Well, what does the Omnissiah Edition do? Oh, you guys can figure that out. I can't know literally everything in life. Um, so that one's fine. Up next, we have Bolt Gun. Now, obviously, what is Bolt Gun? Uh, well, let's talk about Bolt Gun real quick. Um, this is the expansion coming out. Shockingly, not Bolt Gun. Bolt Gun is currently on sale, 35% off for $15. Is this game worth it for $15? Um, probably. The best way I can describe Bolt Gun, it's like Doom. The original Doom is trying to be Doom 2016. Not quite Doom Eternal, but Doom 2016. Uh, there's some things you can do to restore HP. It's pretty fast-paced. Uh, it's all about running and gunning, doing that sort of thing. It doesn't really want you sitting in the back and kiting enemies away. Weapon balance is good. It's not perfect. You will probably start preferring some weapons over others. Uh, the combat looks good. It, it's a pretty good visual game. It's all sprite-based, so it is very much trying to go for that Doom, um, let's say, aesthetic. 
but uh, it, it does look very well done. It's very well drawn. Uh, th this game won't look outdated, despite obviously being, you know, using outdated kind of sprite models and things like that. Uh, for $15, it's not bad. It's not that long of a game, though. Again, um, I would say the combat in this game is probably better than Space Marine. Uh, I mean, it's a newer game and it's kept more up to date with new systems, stuff like that. Uh, so I would say you'll probably enjoy this one more than Space Marine if you're just looking for a shooter. Again, it is Sprite, stuff like that. It's more expensive coming at 15, well, I should say 14.29. I would say this one's probably worth trying if, if you're into Warhammer 40k and you like that sort of stuff. It's a very, uh, very aesthetic sort of game. And as you can see here, it's, it's this is kind of the combat here. So, I mean, it, it does, it does try to stay more up to date with how, uh, FPS games are going these days. So that's, uh, that's bolt gun. Okay. Talisman. This is actually free right now. Um, there's talisman fifth edition, which hasn't been launched yet, but if you do talisman deluxe edition, you can actually go download this one for free right now. Uh, I don't, I I've never played talisman. I'm sorry. I, I, this is a board game that has been put on the PC. I don't even really know why this is here. Apparently it's got some Warhammer cards in it now. Witch Hunters, stuff like that. I have not played this game. I have not experienced this game. I don't really know. I can see on the Steam reviews it's got 72, 78%. So it's not uh, amazing. But also I don't think tabletop games are going to be rated highly to begin with. Um, taking tabletop, tabletop games and putting them to the PC tends to not work out too well. Because uh, tabletop games tend to be pretty boring when you put them on PC. Okay, Warhammer 40k Gladius. This is a turn-based... Uh, I don't even know the right way to put it. It's like a turn-based Warhammer 40k Civilization game. This is turn-based. This is not real-time. Don't let this kind of like try to fool you or anything. So you have armies. Your enemies have armies. You try to fight each other for control of the map. You get more resources the more of the map you own. And you have a tech tree, you move up the tech trees, you start, like, let's say, scouts, uh, tactical marines, devastators, uh, dreadnoughts, uh, predators, uh, land raiders, you know, you're generally moving up the tech tree as time goes on. It's a fine game, I wouldn't say there's any real complaints, the factions do play quite differently from each other, they have a very unique aesthetic to them. Uh, what factions are in the game? Off the top of my head, I think there's Sisters of Battle, Necrons, Tau, Orcs, Space Marines, Chaos Space Marines, Imperial Guard, Adeptus Mechanicus. Uh, there, there's a lot of different factions in this game. In fact, you can see almost all of them right here. Um, again, most of them play pretty differently from each other. Most of them have a very cool uh, look to them. Um, they can play very differently from each other. I, I know I keep mentioning they can play very differently from each other, but that is one of the game's strongest aspects is that, yes, they can play very differently from each other. I mean, you, you can get, uh, if you play Space Marines, you'll end up playing very differently from Orcs. You can have different resources. You can have different ways to play the game, stuff like that. You can have different global powers. You can have different things you can do entirely. So from that perspective, it's pretty good. What's the downside? Uh, this is going to sound really niche, but online play, um, camping your base and just turtling to tech rush tends to be a very viable tactic that you'll see a lot. If you do end up playing this game in multiplayer, which you don't have to, you can play this game totally fine in single player. You never need to play it in multiplayer. But if you do, do know that turtling to tech rush um, seems to be a very effective tactic. Uh, it's very effective in single player. The AI won't do it, but you can do it to the AI. So that can start feeling pretty cheesy. If you ever notice that you can just turtle in your base and then start punching out high tier units to crush the AI. That does seem to be a problem with the game. Um, it's balanced has never quite really figured out how to handle because like obviously higher tier units need to be better, but you know, how much better can they be? It, they can be pretty, they can be pretty good. Let's put it that way. Um, Gladius Prime. Okay, shut up. So how much is Gladius right now? Gladius is free. So if you want to try Gladius, you can go try it right now for free for the, for the great price of you can go download it. You can get it for free. What's the downside? Uh, there's a lot of DLC in the game right now. And uh, boy, as you can see here, even on sale, even on sale, uh, this this adds up as $113 even on sale. Now, the problem here 
is that a lot of this stuff will be needed to properly experience a lot of things in the game. Some factions, I'm not going to say any faction isn't fleshed out. Every faction can at least play the game without their DLC, but some of them can play the game less so than others. Let's put it that way. Uh, additionally, some factions are bought. So even on sale, the Drukhari, that's the Dark Elves for those of you who haven't kept up with lingo. Uh, it's $12.74. Uh, the Tau are still $9. Uh, Craft World Eldari, uh, those are $9. Adeptus Mechanicus are $9. Adeptus Soritas are $11.24. Tyranids are over here at $9. So despite the fact that you might get the game for free, I believe the launch factions are... What are they? I think it's... Uh, Space Marines, Imperial Guard, Chaos, and Orcs. So if you like those four, you can get it for free. You can go try the game right now. I mean, to be honest, you could go try the game right now for free. It's it's basically Civilization meets Warhammer 40k. Um, uh, that, that's about as good as I could describe it to you. Uh... <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, it's just, it's, it's Civilization meets Warhammer 40k. How many balance issues are in the game? Are some factions just way better than others? Yes, I would say that that's true. Uh, from the little bit that I experienced, Imperial Guards suffer pretty hard. Um, Imperial Guard are not really that good. But other than that, um, the other ones are mostly fine. There are some strategies that people don't like and will generally find very offensive. For example... Um, Adeptus Mechanicus can turtle cities and just tech rush super high-end units, and then that can be pretty difficult and frustrating for a lot of people to deal with. Uh, but again, you don't need to play multiplayer, and you don't need to do that strategy. So if you, if you don't want to do that, then you don't need to do that. Okay, so these are the free games you can just download. You can get Talisman, I guess. So there's Gladius. There's Gladius's new t DLC. There's Battle Sector. Now, I haven't personally played Battle Sector, but... Uh, this is a another um, turn-based. I don't know why it keeps on meeting. This is another turn-based uh, Warhammer 40k game. Uh, you don't build your units, I don't think, but you know it's turn-based. You have your units. You take your turn. You shoot enemies on your turn. Blah 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 blah. Reviews for it are uh, eighty percent. Um, it costs twenty dollars though, which is you know kind of asking for a lot for a three-year-old game. That, uh, is, I mean, maybe it's fine, it's fine, I just, you know, what are you gonna do? I don't, I don't have that much to say, because I have not seen it at all. Warhammer 40k, sorry, Warhammer 3. Warhammer 3, is Warhammer 3 worth your money? Yes, but also no. So, Warhammer 3 is a bit of a mixed pickle right now. Um, Warhammer launched at a time when the game was very bad. Warhammer 3 launched and the game was quite bad. Um, I'm gonna have to go briefly into the history of Warhammer here. So um, there was Total Warhammer 1, which was a fairly mediocre product. It wasn't very bad, but it was not very good. It was, it was a pretty mediocre product. Total Warhammer 2 came out and was also a fairly mediocre product. Then they combined Total Warhammer 1 and Total Warhammer 2, and if you owned both games, you could play in a large campaign map, combining all the different races onto a large campaign map. That was good. People liked it. Then they put out a lot of DLC, and that was also good. Uh, people liked it. Um, and because of this, uh, the game slowly increased in popularity as time went on. In fact, if we look at the... Uh, I'm going to look at the Steam charts real quick here. You can see that the popularity of Total Warhammer 2... Now, this is when Total Warhammer 3 launched, so obviously it ate the player base. But you can see the popularity of Total Warhammer 2, this is on DLC launches, uh, increased with time. The amount of players in the game went up over time. Not every single time, because, you know, sometimes people drop off after DLCs, but overall, the game got more popular over time. Um... So that's Total Warhammer 2. Now, Total Warhammer 3 came out, and here is the problem with Total Warhammer 3. The game launched, and not only was it a mediocre product, I would say it straight up launched in a bad product. Uh, most of the factions that the game launched with, because the first game launched with humans, vampires, dwarves, and orcs. Most of them were not very fleshed out. 
They didn't have a lot of units, but they were fine. Total Warhammer 2 launched with Dark Elves, Skaven, High Elves, and Lizardmen. Once again, they weren't really fleshed out, but they were fine. Total Warhammer 3 launched with Nurgle, Korn, Sonesh, Zinch, uh, Cathay, Kislev. Is that it? I don't remember if that was it. I, th I think that might have been it. There was also Demons of Chaos, but that's just more chaos. What's the problem? As you're imagining, they launched with more factions, which meant that they kind of stretched their roster thin. Um, Cathay has a kind of, sort of, okay launch. Like, so basically, let me put it this way. If you just bought the base game of Total Warhammer 3, if you just bought the base game for $30 right now, could you have a fun time? It's it's really it's really more complicated than you're thinking. Now, me personally, I own every DLC in the game, which will come out to $176. So if you thought Gladius was bad, so the question is, can you have fun in this game without putting in any additional money? Is it merely a $30 game? The answer is probably no. Uh, I think you could probably enjoy the game and get on with it, but you have Kislev. So, like, let's say you just buy the game, right? Right now, you ju you're only just buying Total Warhammer 3. You can play any of the Chaos Gods, Nurgle, Korn, Zinch, and Slanesh. Um, Nurgle just got a rework. He's pretty decent. They put out a free additional Lord for Nurgle. So, if you have Nurgle, you have uh, uh, Epidemius and Kugoth that you can play. So, you do actually have a second choice, even if you don't own anything else. You know, so that was good of them to give out free content. Um, Nurgle's roster is okay. Korn's roster is okay. Slanesh's roster is okay. Zinch's base roster leaves a bit to be desired. If you want to play Zinch, you might have to get the DLC. See, here's the problem with this game. Uh, right after launch, it put out the Champions of Chaos DLC. Now, the Champions of Chaos DLC has the unfortunate side effect of... It added a lot of things for Chaos. In fact, they say over 50 new Battlefield units. This means the Chaos factions now got all Marauders. So you have Marauders of Corn, Marauders of Slanesh, Marauders of Nurgle, etc. You have Horsemen of Slanesh, Nurgle, etc. Um, you, you get all this stuff for all the different gods. The problem here, as you might imagine, is without this DLC, the Chaos Gods can look a little bit skimpy. They can start feeling a little bit like they don't have their content. For example, Nurgle does not have his two-handed uh, Chaos Warriors. If you do have this DLC, you can have two-handed Chaos Warriors and two-handed Chosen of Chaos, which, as you might imagine, uh, wielding big armor piercing weapons allows Nurgle to do damage late game. Without this DLC, Nurgle can seriously suffer. Um, yeah, this is kind of where this is going here. Uh, you also don't have specific lords. So, for example, without this DLC, you can't get the Chaos Lord of Corn. You can get the Exalted Blood Letter Chieftain Guy. The whatever the, the you can't get the normal demon lord, but you can't get the mortal lord. You can't get the chaos lord of corn. So what I'm saying here is that um, no matter what you do, you're gonna feel compelled into buying some of these DLC. My personal opinion, I think the majority of these should have been like 90% off at this point. Um, I think they should be highly encouraging people to buy their old DLC. At the very least, I think some of them should start getting wrapped into the base game. At the very least, if you want to experience the full game, you will probably want the uh, bundle. Now, they do have a bundle here. You can buy all of them. I think it's $57. Now, this, of course, gets you, as I just mentioned earlier, this gets you uh, humans, well, empire. This gets you the empire, dwarves. Uh, dwarves just got a rework, by the way. It's a very good rework. So you have empire, dwarves, orcs. Uh, orcs got a rework a couple years ago. They're pretty good right there too. Undead. Undead got a soft rework twice. They're fine. They're okay. Um, High Elves, Dark Elves, Skaven, and Lizardmen. Lizardmen aren't great. Skaven feel pretty... I'm going to be honest with you. Skaven feel pretty... It, it very much feels like their roster is lacking if you do not have um, the DLC for it. So... Take that as you will. Um, and then, of course, that gives you the Total Warhammer 3 factions I was mentioning earlier. So, in summation, is this worth it? Should you get Total Warhammer 3? 
Yes, tentatively. If you're into Warhammer 3 and you've wanted to get into Total Warhammer, this would probably be your opportunity to do it at a good discount. Uh, you can get all three games, and remember, all three games combine. Um, when you launch the game, you have the Immortal Empires. So that's the whole map that includes every faction in the game. Every faction in the game is in the Immortal Empires map. So all this DLC, everything you buy is in there. If you buy the Chaos Dwarves, the Chaos Dwarves will be in there. If you buy the Wood Elves, you can play the Wood Elves in there. If you buy Norska, you can play Norska in there. So every faction in the game will be in the Immortal Empires map. Um, so is it worth your money? Again, if you're looking to get into it, this is probably a good time. But it is also a very expensive game that, uh, unfortunately, and this is what I always mention, the problem is a lot of these rosters will feel like they're missing something without DLC. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Dwarves without DLC will probably play just fine, and you might not even notice that you're missing anything. Their base roster is actually pretty solid. Humans, on the other hand, um, baseline humans are fine. You'll feel fine, but you'll just feel like something's off. Uh, Undead will also definitely feel like something's off, even though they only have one DLC. Um, a lot of the Chaos Factions will feel like something's off. Kiesel's base roster is fine, but without the DLC, you'll, you'll, you'll feel something's off. Cathay's base roster is basically fine. Their DLC roster doesn't actually add as much as you think. But, you know, let's let's move on here. Let's move on. I, I could spend a lot of time talking about Total Warhammer 3. So anyway, uh, there we go, there we go, there we go. Blood Bowl, Blood Bowl. Okay, is Blood Bowl worth your money? Based on these reviews, I'm going to say no. Now, I don't say this lightly. I have played a lot of Blood Bowl in my life. Blood Bowl Legendary Edition, I had 106 hours. Blood Bowl Chaos Edition, I had 71 hours. And Blood Bowl 2, I put in 36 hours. You might be noticing over time I put less and less time in the game. That's because I find that... Uh, uh, what's the right way to put this? I find that Blood Bowl has not changed adequately enough and the rules stay st pretty stagnant because the player base doesn't want the rules to change. Inevitably, um, now just to be clear, Blood Bowl is a course. It, you're trying to play um, football, but with Warhammer teams. Do you get it? It's funny. Okay. The problem is, uh, some people like to play this as a combat game. It's all dice rolling, so you can just totally fail on dice rolls and get absolutely nothing, okay? So the problem is, some people like to play this game as a combat game where they like to beat the crap out of you. Some people like to play this game like an actual point game where you're playing for points. Um, these two differences can start... What's the right way to put this? The differences between these two opinions can start really getting frustrating. If you're playing in a public league, a lot of teams will only try to injure your team. Now, these injuries can be permanent or they can follow you game to game. If you're fighting an orc team that is only trying to hurt your team and not really trying to win the game, you might win the game and then find that your team got beat up so bad that you can't really play the game anymore. That can be frustrating to play in public leagues. This leads with private leagues. Private leagues are fine, but then I find that the majority of what you're doing in a private league is you're playing with your base team, you're leveling up all your characters to get block and dodge on them, then you restart the campaign, you restart the season with a fresh team, and then you level up everyone and get block and dodge on them. That gets old and boring. So, um, yeah. Additionally, the game was rife with DLC. Um, a lot of people don't really like that there is so much DLC in Blood Bowl, uh, Blood Bowl as a game is, they're asking for a lot of money. Well, I mean, they're not anymore. Blood Bowl 2 is only $20. I'm shocked Blood Bowl 2 is not on sale. But, uh, you can see here, like, the vast majority of the teams are DLC. Now, this might sound hypocritical that I said Total Warhammer 3 is maybe worth your money and maybe worth your time getting into, but I'm saying Blood Bowl isn't. So, the problem here is that you buy the game... And, and and let's let's check here. How much is uh how much are they asking for here? So it's fifty percent off. So you're paying fifteen dollars for a game which hasn't really updated that much for a very long time. Okay, so you're paying fifteen dollars for that game, and then you need to pay twenty four more dollars. So talking about a game that's asking for forty dollars to get a very old system, we're asking for a game that, to my knowledge, was very buggy and broken on release, and. Uh, hasn't really changed in decades now. So there's Blood Bowl 1, 
And after everyone bought all the DLC for them, then they came out with Blood Bowl 2. Then everyone had to buy all the DLC again. And then, hey, guess what? Blood Bowl 3. And you know what they're doing now? You'd guess it. More DLC. <laughs> so, um, let's just say, look, I'm totally fine with DLC with games like Total Warhammer. If it's actually like adding to the game. Um, none of the DLC for Total Warhammer anymore. They used to be very uh, price gougy. They're still a little bit price gougy, but at least you get lots of content out of it. But the problem is, um, if you're adding a lot of DLC just to get people back to the base game, that can feel pretty bad. So Blood Bowl, I just wouldn't recommend it. That's just my personal opinion. I, I just think it's outdated. And yeah. Okay, Rogue Trader. Oh boy, Rogue Trader. Okay, so this one is a bit of a mixed bag. Rogue Trader is obviously a turn-based RPG. You level up characters, you put points and abilities, you do dialogue, you have choices, you have a party, you have a ship, choices matter, etc, etc, etc. Is it good at face level, fundamentally? Yes. Um, here's the problem. Whoever writes for this game doesn't understand how writing works. The best way I can put it is every time a line is voice acted, it will be short and to the point. There's not a lot of voice acting in this game, mind you. But if a line is voice acted, it will generally read like how an actual human talks. A human will talk normally, like a human. But the second it goes to text, someone will say, Oh man, we're going into the warp. And someone will go into a nine paragraph explanation on what the warp is, why it's dangerous, why we're here, the history of the warp, when the last time he was in the warp, blah, 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 blah. The text in this game gets dire. It gets overwhelming. There is too much text in this game. Whoever wrote this game needed to take about half the text they had written out completely and then the half they had remaining they needed to shorten to actually make this game readable this is one of the few games i've ever played where i got mentally exhausted because you have to read so much a normal conversation with any of the npcs typically involves they will say three paragraphs you ask them one thing they'll they'll you'll say who are you the planetary governor and they'll go into three paragraphs about what a planetary governor is in 40k then you'll say i'm here to help and they'll go into five paragraphs about what's going on what chaos is and what forces he has available blah 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 you'll say oh i think i could help out and then they'll go into 22 different para and oh my god it can get mentally draining because you don't know what text you can safely skip past and you don't know what text is just needless, long, expository overload. Um, is the combat good? I would say the combat in this game is quite good. I actually very much did enjoy the combat. The ship combat, not so much though, mind you. The ship combat was pretty bad. But the ground combat was very good, very well done. For a turn-based game, I felt it was very punchy, impactful, fun. What's the problem with it? Mid to late game, you will very quickly find that your characters start becoming way too overpowered, way too quickly, and the combat will start feeling tedious and monotonous. When, basically, the best way to put it is that you can stack enough buffs on your characters that the only way for the enemies to win combat after the mid game is to bum rush you and somehow hit enough shots and crits turn one to kill your characters. If they don't do that, if they fail to do that, you will start stacking so many buffs, getting so many additional actions, getting so many turn advantages that your enemies cannot possibly react anymore and you'll start doing absolutely wild things like attacking 12 times in a turn. It's crazy. So what would I rate this game? How much is it being sold for right now? $35. That's a hard ask for $35. Now the problem is this game, as you did see here, it does have a lot of models. It does have a lot of different enemies you can fight. The combat is very visceral and very fun at first. It just drones on. You'll be drowned out in two different things. As we can see, the reviews are okay. Not great, but okay. The problem is two different things. The lack of voice acting and the absolute expository overload means that as time goes on, you will want to read the quests less and less and less and less and less. 
Additionally, as the combat starts droning on, and your characters get too overpowered, some people like the power fantasy and they're into that, but in a turn-based game, um, it can start feeling kind of boring when you're kind of styling on a Chaos Space Marine by taking 12 attacks on him and just, you know, chunking down his HP slowly. It can get a bit uh, tedious, okay? So is it worth it at $35? If you're into turn-based games and you're into this sort of thing, uh, my personal opinion is I would recommend it. I, I, I think for $35, it's fine. Um, you can do co-op. This isn't, this isn't it. Um, let's, let's focus here. You can do co-op. So I was, I was looking at that and I, and I uh, but I, I don't think the co-op is that great. Other people just take over characters in your ship. Your character will always be unique and different. And then you have companions. Uh, your friends can take over the companions for you and play as them, which is fine, which is fun. Uh, I wouldn't actually call it fun though. It's fine though. So if you ever just, you know, have a friend and he's like, Hey, what are you doing? And you're like, I'm playing rogue trader. And he's like, Oh shoot, I'm bored. And you're like, I don't know. You want to take over my engineer? And then he can do that. It won't probably be the most fun he's ever had in his life, but you know, you can, you know, you can come together as friends, I guess. Uh, again, for $35 is probably fine. Um, again, it just, it, it's a game, it, it'll slowly drag on as time goes on. It does have a DLC coming out soon. Have I played that DLC? Uh, no, obviously I haven't. Dark Tide. Is Dark Tide worth your money? Man, that's a question a lot of people have asked. That's a question I've asked myself. So Dark Tide is a game I always recommend, I, I, I always regret because Dark Tide is one of the first games I tried to review on this channel. And I tried to give it the benefit of a doubt so much to the point where I think I made a mistake. Um, my initial impression of the game was there was clearly not enough content for it to launch and it was going to be a bare bones, very boring game. I gave it the benefit of a doubt and I said, look, the music is great. The visuals are great. The shooting is fantastic. I'm sure they might be holding back some stuff. Maybe, 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 maybe it'll end up being good. No. Uh, unfortunately, it launched with very little content, very little things to do. Every enemy ends up playing the same. You have to go through hordes of enemies a lot. Uh, most of the weapons feel very familiar to each other. Very few of them feel unique and different. Now, you can say Warhammer 40k doesn't have many weapons. Sure, I agree. There's not a whole lot of different weapon styles you can give to Inquisition troops, but that's not a problem that I'm concerned with when I review a game. I don't review a game and I say, look how faithful they are to the source material. I review a game, and at the very least, I should have originally. I should have said... I mean, you can see the music is great though, right? Um, so, I mean, when I review a game, I should say, is it fun to play? And for the most part, it was uh, fun to play. The music was fantastic, but it just dragged. Uh, the hordes all play the same. There was only two types of big enemies at first. Only one type of boss enemy. Um, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I think there are the three types of big enemies. They might have added an additional boss. I, I don't even know. I checked back in on this game a couple months ago. Um, it had not made much progress. Could this game have made such amazing progress since I last played it that it's now totally worth your money? Well, they did add more music. They did add an additional enemy type. Just one enemy type, though. They have added some weapons, but mostly... They're just side grades from each other. So instead of Assault Rifle AR-12, you now have Assault Rifle AR-12B. Assault Rifle AR-12BC, right? It's just, like, that's kind of how they do things. And there's slight variations on each other, and they call it a new weapon. And that can just get quite boring and tedious. Um, I can tell based on these reviews that the game is probably... Based on the fact that it's still reviewing 68% recently, I have to imagine that it has not improved as much as I'd think. Yeah, um, the performance is really questionable. Um, the performance is really questionable, and there's not that much content to do. You know, there was actually almost no player progression at launch. You literally just got the max level, and you were like, okay, and you were done. I don't, I don't know what to say. Look, uh, I'll, I'll say it once, I'll say it a thousand times. Look, at the end of the day, you can't just let the players get really overpowered weapons 
and then be like, but look, it's a single player. It's a co-op game. Let the players have fun. The problem is if you get really overpowered weapons and you crush the highest difficulty, then you quit the game because it's boring. Not only was there basically nothing to do in this game because there weren't that many weapons, there wasn't that much variety, and um, it just was a very shallow experience, but you could, you know, you could pretty quickly max out your gear, and the gear wasn't very interesting either. Not only that, the UI for the gear was abysmal. So let's move on from Dark Tide. Dark Tide, I mean, how much is it going to $24? Uh, by the way, and, and just to be clear, this game does have microtransactions. A lot of them, they try to sell armor sets and things like that. So even for $24, we're talking about you're buying into a live service game for $24. Now, if you want to experience a game once, it's probably... I mean, even for $24, I, I, I would say like $15 or $10, I would say, yeah, sure, go buy it and just play it for a bit. You'll probably enjoy it. For $24, we're starting to shove down a lot of cash for a game that's also wanting you to buy a lot of armor sets and things like that. I also don't like rewarding companies that, uh, you know, very clearly launch games two years before they were ready. It very much seemed like Dark Tide launched in a minimum viable product quality. By that, I mean they took the product at the minimum, the absolute minimum viability to release a product and shoved it out there. With no additional bells, no whistles, they said, look guys, it's the absolute minimum we've done. Look, they basically had a proof of concept on their combat and launched the game. Vermintide 2, so this is made by the same company. Uh, this is much better reviews. Uh, we're in the 80% here. Vermintide 2 generally is considered to be the superior version of uh, Darktide. Dark Tide seemed to launch very crepily. Now, whereas Dark Tide is way more focused on guns and way more focused on range combat, it does have a lot of melee, but it's way more focused on range. Vermintide, on the other hand, is way more focused on melee. Um, is it interesting? Eh, I got bored of this game not too far in my personal opinion. I think I got like 30 hours in here and I just kind of started to drag on. The melee combat is fine. It just... I don't know the right way to put it. There wasn't really that much I felt you could do. A lot of things that you were doing were just sweeping attacks over and over again. Now, you can disagree with me, and you can say, oh, well, you're not playing the game right if that's all you're doing. That's fine, but that's just kind of how you would have to fight when you do hordes. You just sweep left, sweep right, sweep left, sweep right, push, push, sweep left, sweep right. It, it got very droning. Um, But, you know, don't take my opinion for everything. People have liked this game a lot. Um, with 80%, sorry, mid-80s reviews, it's doing fine. I wouldn't say this is, like, uh, going to blow your mind. I wouldn't say this game is the best game you've ever played in your entire life. Um, you do have a wide cast of characters. They do come out with uh, some free DLCs, and then they do come out with uh, some paid DLCs. So you can see here we have uh, Map Pack, Map Pack, Map Pack, uh, Treacherous Adventures. I think we added a new way to play the game. Uh, on sale, we're looking at $6, which is a pretty good price right there for a game like this. So we're going to add $6, and you can pick up a bunch of these different careers for a few dollars. So we got Necromancer Career for $3.30. Necromancer Career? Necromancer? Well, I suppose it is the end times. Technically, vampires would have been slightly working with humans. Technically? That technically is a big stretch here. I'm not sure a witch hunter would work together. I think a witch hunter would tolerate a vampire and a necromancer because they were told to. I don't think they would fight alongside with them. That's just my gut feeling. Someone quote me some end times lore if I'm wrong, I guess. So warrior priest career, sister of the thorn, forgotten relics pack, grail knight career. Um... Yeah, so we, we got a bunch of stuff here. I would say, if, if you're going to try to buy a Tide game, I would go for Vermintide. That's just my gut feeling. Um, Much cheaper. Uh, Probably isn't going to destroy your PC to run. The graphics are still fine, even though this came out. Remember, this game came out in 2018, so this is still a semi-recent game. This is not a bad-looking game. This game is not going to look bad to you, okay? Um, so that's all I can say. I would say, if you're looking between the two Tide games, I would go for Vermintide. Um, you can buy them together for $28, which is not... I mean, you're saving two bucks. So, yeah. You're saving two buff. That's about all the games uh, I played here. Now, I did 
Ooh, I did actually play Inquisitor Martyr. Oh boy, I remember this game. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I played so little of this game. I got bored of it because I bought it in early access so long ago and it was very bare bones and not really that interesting. Um, <coughs> the reviews for it seem to be fairly mid. It's kind of like a Diablo game. <laughs> How much time did I put into it? 4.3 hours. Yeah, that's, that's about what I put into it. It's It was fine. It just wasn't really that amazing. Honestly, um... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, if this game was like five bucks, I'd be like, screw it, put it in. At ten bucks, we're asking a lot for a game you're maybe, probably not even going to enjoy. Other than that, I think that's all the games I've played, or at least put time into. I, I've put time into most of these games. Um, They have the great games list. Have I gone over any of them? They got Vermintide 1 for 224. At, at that point, just get Vermintide 2. Save bucks on uh, money. Oh, we got one game here I can definitely review. We got Battlefleet Gothic Armada. Now, I have an issue. I have a bone to pick with Battlefleet Gothic Armada. I actually played Battlefleet Gothic Armada 1. You can see I have 20 hours on record. I played all of that in multiplayer. Now, let me explain Battlefleet Gothic Armada. Battlefleet Gothic received a very poor reputation. Um... I don't really know a better way to put this. Uh, it received a very poor reputation. Um, because when you played in multiplayer, you played with a persistent fleet. If a ship was damaged, it would stay damaged for a bit. If a ship was obliterated, it would actually get obliterated. You got a certain amount of money each time you took a battle to buy new ships to kind of build up your fleet. It was played, I think, it was it played in real time? You'd think this would be the sort of thing I'd know I mean, put 20 hours into the game, and yet... Away the darkness. Um... It received a poor reputation because the multiplayer was extremely punishing, with bad players basically losing their fleets and not really being able to continue. Personal opinion, despite constantly getting my ass blasted and barely winning, I actually really, really, really enjoyed the concept. The concept of that was amazing. And it made me want to play more and more in multiplayer because uh, I, I just enjoyed kind of actually caring about my ship. Sacrificing a ship didn't mean just sacrificing a ship. Uh, even if I lose a little Corvette or even if I lose a destroyer, that will be a ship I have to buy again. So sacrificing a ship to try to flank an enemy could feel pretty bad. Um, it did get a bad reputation from that, as you saw. And yeah. So Battlefleet Gothic Armada 2 came out, and it reviewed better. Not amazing, but it did review better. I put 2.2 hours into it. To be blunt here, I saw that they had removed the persistent multiplayer, and I actually kind of dropped all interest in the game. I tried to play through the single-player campaign, and I just was not interested in it at all, and I, I just dropped interest. Now, this is a $4 game. It does have a single-player campaign. It's fine. I don't know a better way to put it. It's it's fine. It's got a lot of crash issues being reported. Um, yeah, lots of people downvoting it. Downvoting it. Lots of people giving it the thumbs down due to crash issues. For $4, if you're into space combat and you want Battlefleet Gothic space combat and you want a decent enough single player game, it's fine. I mean, it's four bucks. What, what, you, you know, if you got four bucks and you're into that sort of game, just, you know, you got it. Um, oh boy, are we doing Dawn of War now? Are we gonna do, are we talking about Dawn of War? Are we going down to Dawn of War? Am I gonna talk about Dawn of War? Am I gonna, oh boy, um, so let's see here. We got uh, 352 hours in Dawn of War 2, 47 hours in Chaos Rising, and 26 hours in Dawn of War 2 Retribution. It's been a while since I've played these games. Would I recommend them if they're on sale? 
I'm gonna be honest with you. This this is this is gonna this, uh, this might be nostalgia talking. You can see I have not played these games. Let me be clear here. I have not played this game since 2014. Would I recommend this game? Yeah, kinda actually. Um. So how does the Dawn of War series play? It's complicated. Dawn of War Two is not really an RTS sort of game. Um, what it is instead is you have a persistent squad. So you have your captain, devastator, tactical marine, dreadnought, and you take them in mission to mission. Every time you complete a mission, you get random gear. You can get a common bolter, uncommon bolter with plus five damage or something. I don't really remember. You could find gear and it could get better and it could get worse, right? Okay. So you would hope to find good upgrades for your squad. It was kind of like an RPG. Uh, so you'd like be fighting Tyranids. Unlike normal RTS games where your units are about equal to theirs. Um, if you took it slow, your tactical Marines would absolutely mow through Tyranids. Your heavy devastators laying down heavy bolter fire would uh, absolutely mow down Tyranids. Okay. So that's kind of how the game played. Uh, was it good? Yeah, I remember liking it. The multiplayer was interesting. Um, but obviously I don't think there's going to be a multiplayer community around anymore. Right? So you'd be mostly playing this for the single player. Was it single player? Good. It was interesting. Um, that's all I can say. Reviews for the game are in the 80%. Recent reviews are down here. At only 80%. It's, uh, I would say that this game is, he enjoys the multiplayer, but it can only take it so far. Um, yeah, the multiplayer in this game, I, I don't have time to talk about it, but the multiplayer in this game was kind of tacked on quite literally last second. So it didn't really get the most work on it. Um, there is a last stand mode. Lots of people enjoy playing that one. Uh, the last stand. I, I don't think that's actually in the base game, was it? Um, man, I'm trying to remember here. I know they added a bunch of DLC because people wanted more last stand characters. Yeah, Retribution, last stand, the uh, Necrod. <laughs> Overlord. Oh, yeah, you can see this is all last stand DLC right here. Because last stand for this game, basically everyone gets a hero. So you got four heroes, you and three friends or three randoms. And then you try to survive against waves of enemies. You level up your dude throughout it. Um, it's pretty fun. Uh, as you complete campaigns, you unlock more gear for your dude. So you could start with like a plasma. There, sorry, you could start with like a bolt pistol, go to a regular bolter, go to a plasma pistol, go to a plasma rifle. There's upsides and downsides to each different weapon. So it's fun. The last stand mode was pretty fun. Uh, the game as a whole was pretty fun. Would I recommend it coming in? Retribution's coming in at 750. Uh, see, like the thing is, these games are old, and, and that kind of gets to be the problem. Can I recommend old games that I have nostalgia on? They were fine. They were fun games. If you got nothing better to do with your time, they're fine. Dawn of War 2 is fine. It's just like the game is 15 years old, you know? You're going to get a 15 year old game, and you're going to get all the quirks that go with a 15 year old game. Uh, it's going to feel a little bit dated in certain ways, but it does have an RTS campaign. It does try to have a, I mean, it has a Warhammer 40k story. You're not getting the A team here, okay? You're not getting the best writing you've ever seen in your life. But, uh, yeah, so Dawn of War 2, it's, it's a fine game. Uh, I'm not sure I'd recommend it. I'll be real with you. Would I recommend Dawn of War 1? No. Um, I'm sorry, Dawn of War 1 is way too dated, and if you're not already into the game, you're probably not willing to buy all the mods, sorry, buy, install all the mods you need to make it actually work. Um, if you're into Dawn of War 1, then yeah, go get Dawn of War 1, and, you know, get mods and stuff, and actually make it work. But other than that, I mean, you can see it's graphically pretty dated at this point. Uh, <laughs> it, it's pretty dated, uh... Oh boy. And uh, you need a lot of mods to make this game work. In particular is a bug, um, the ranged attack bug, which I don't think was ever actually fixed. 
Uh, I'm not going to go into it. If it was fixed, good job. But I don't think it was ever actually uh, fixed. And I believe that is it. Don't buy Dawn of War 3. Don't buy any of these random 40k games. Like, I'm sorry. Unless you see a good review for a Warhammer game, I would highly recommend you don't buy it. Don't buy a, a 40k game unless you get a good review. Oh, last game, it's probably on sale. Let me go ahead and double check. Um, Space Hulk. Space Hulk is actually... Oh, it's no longer available in the Steam store. Huh. Oh, because they have the Enhanced Edition. This game. Oof. Okay, so this game is very complicated. This is going to be the last one I'm going to go over just because I can. So here is the problem. This developer is probably one of my most favorite developers ever. I don't know why it's going to focus entertainment. Um, this is not the right one. Uh, okay. The Strumon Studio. Very interesting studio. They made a game. I'm not going to mention it, but it's a very big cult classic. Uh, people enjoy it. Then they decided to do Deathwing. Deathwing sucked on release. They released the Enhanced Edition. It still was not very good. It's playable now. Um, it's it's playable now. What do you do? You play as a Terminator. This is Death Hulk. You play as a Terminator and you shoot lots of Space Marines. Do I wish it was better? Yes. I very much wish this game was better. Because, oh my god, I love this studio so much. Because of that one game they made. And... I just wish they had done a better job. I, I it, it, This is like the only time I've ever been disappointed in a studio because I liked the developers so much. This is like the one developer I actually liked a lot and they let me down, unfortunately. Bought the game and everything, so... Oh well, what are you going to do? So that's it. I would say that that's the entire Warhammer Skulls sale. If I talk about a game and I like it, then, you know, maybe go consider buying it. If I talk about a game and I don't like it or I don't recommend it, I would probably not recommend buying it. But hopefully that lets everyone kind of navigate this sale and get a game or two that they might actually enjoy while they're on sale. So thank you all for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you, everybody. As always, have a great rest of your day.